the power's out. Not just your house, not just your block, everything. No hum from the fridge, no glow from the streetlights, no little notification buzz to tell you the world still exists. The grid is dead. And here's the fun part. Most people don't realize they're about to die until day three. That's when the water stops, when the toilets back up, when the grocery stores have been picked cleaner than a carcass in the desert, when your neighbor, nice guy, always waved, starts eyeing your pantry like it's a buffet. You've got seven days to figure out if you're the kind of person who survives this or the kind that becomes a cautionary tale whispered around a trash fire. No worries, we're doing this together. Grab a notebook, or don't, you'll remember this part. Day one, the denial phase. Everyone thinks it'll be back on soon. Wrong. A total blackout means no water pumps, no sewage, no gas stations, no refrigeration. Your food is dying, your city is dying. You just don't smell it yet. Step one, stop panicking. Start moving. Fill every container you have with water. The bathtub, pots, buckets, that weird vase from your aunt. If it holds liquid, it's a reservoir. You've got about 12 hours before municipal pressure drops to zero. After that, your taps are just decorative. And don't trust what's in those pipes after day two. Stagnant water breeds bacteria faster than conspiracy theories. Boil everything. No exceptions. Not for coffee, not for brushing teeth. Step two, inventory your food like a doomsday accountant. You're eating for calories now, for fuel. Forget the ice cream, it's soup. Prioritize anything that spoils first. Dairy, meat, fresh produce. Cook it all. Your gas stove still works. A charcoal grill works. A fire in your backyard works. You're not hosting a dinner party. You're trying not to starve by Thursday. Canned goods, dried pasta, rice, beans, your new best friends. Ration them. Seven days isn't short when you're burning 3,000 calories a day from stress and constant low-grade terror. Step three, light but make it tactical. Candles are great until you wake up on fire. Use flashlights sparingly. Batteries are currency now. Get a hand crank flashlight or make one. Strip a DC motor from an old toy, attach a handle, wire it to an LED. Spin it, light happens. Physics doesn't care if the world ended. And here's the most important part of day one. Don't advertise you're prepared. No lights blazing at night, no music. In a blackout, the house with lights gets visited not by carolers. Day two, the realization phase. Toilets don't flush. The smell is starting. Your phone is a paperweight. The streets are quieter, but in a wrong way, like the silence before a dog growls. Step four, sanitation. This is how you don't die of dysentery like it's 1850. No running water means no sewage. That means disease. You need a latrine. Dig a hole at least 200 feet from any water source two feet deep minimum. Use it. Cover it with dirt after every single use. This isn't optional. This is the difference between surviving and becoming a statistic. No toilet paper? Use leaves, cloth, old newspapers. Just wash your hands. Ash from a fire works as soap. It'll kill the bacteria. Trade-offs. Step five, water. Round two, you're already running low. Rainwater is your best bet. Set out tarps, trash bags, anything to catch it. Funnel it, boil it, and filter it through sand, gravel, and charcoal layered in a bottle. No rain? Dig a solar still. A hole, a container in the center, a plastic sheet over the top with a rock in the middle to make a dip. The sun evaporates moisture from the soil, it condenses on the plastic and drips into your container. It's slow, tedious, but it works. Or find a stream, a pond, a puddle. Boil it, filter it, boil it again. Assume everything is contaminated, because it is. Step six, heat. If it's winter, your house is now a freezer. No furnace, no electric blankets. Seal off one room, the smallest one. Insulate it. Blankets over windows, towels under doors. If you need fire indoors, it's risky. Carbon monoxide will kill you quieter than the cold. Crack a window. Use a metal trash can as a makeshift stove. Burn wood, not plastic. No fireplace? A terracotta pot over a few candles radiates heat. Not much but enough to keep your core temperature stable, enough to keep you from making stupid decisions, which is what happens when your brain starts to freeze. The first three days decide who makes it to day four. The next four decide who sees the sunrise on day eight. The choice of which group you're in, that's being made right now. Don't be a cautionary tale. Let's continue with the next phase, 
Day four to five, the chaos phase, or people are the real problem. This is when it gets weird. Stores have been looted, some neighborhoods have organized, others have descended into Lord of the Flies with better dental work. You're hearing rumors, the power's coming back, the government's coming, the military's coming, no one's coming. Step seven, security, because your neighbor's not waving anymore. Lock your doors, board your windows, look poor, look empty, look boring. The house that looks abandoned doesn't get broken into. The house that looks stocked gets swarmed. Make noise traps, cans on a string, gravel under windows, anything that alerts you to movement. Sleep in shifts if you're not alone. Stay away from windows, stay quiet. And if you have to defend yourself, improvise. A baseball bat, a kitchen knife, a can of wasp spray, shoots 20 feet and blinds on contact. I'm not saying you'll need it, I'm saying you'll regret not having it. Step eight, communication, or how to know if the world's still out there. Your phone's dead, the internet's gone, but radio waves don't need a grid. A battery-powered AM FM radio is your lifeline. Emergency broadcasts, news, proof that someone, somewhere is still trying. No radio? Make one. A crystal radio, a coil of wire, a diode from an old circuit board, an earphone and a long antenna wire. No power needed. It pulls energy from the radio waves themselves. Tune it. Listen. The signal's faint, but it's there. You're not alone. Or worse, you are. Step nine, food. Round two, because you're out of canned peaches. You've eaten everything that spoils. Now you're rationing. One meal a day, maybe two if you're lucky. Your body's already adapting. Ketosis, fat burning that fog in your head that makes everything feel slow and sharp at the same time. Hunt if you can, trap if you can't. A snare is just a loop of wire anchored to a tree. Set it on a game trail, check it daily. Squirrels, rabbits, anything small, cook it thoroughly. Parasites don't care about your survival story. Forage, dandelions, acorns, cattails. Learn what's edible, learn what'll kill you. There's no margin for error here. We're fish. A hook's just a bent pin, a line's just string, bait's just, uh, anything, worms, insects, desperation. Days six to seven, the endurance phase, or maybe I'm built different. You made it, a week. Most people didn't, some gave up, some got sick, some made bad decisions in the dark and paid for it, but you're still here. Tired, dirty, hungry, but here. Step 10, routine, because the mind breaks before the body. You need structure, wake up at the same time, eat at the same time, sleep at the same time. It sounds stupid when you're living in a collapse, but routine is what keeps you human. It's what keeps you from staring at the wall for six hours wondering if any of this matters. It does, you matter, your survival matters. Step 11, hope, but the practical kind. The power might come back, it might not. Plan for both. Keep rationing, keep filtering water, keep the fire going, keep listening to the radio. And if it doesn't come back, if this is the new normal, then you adapt, you learn, you survive. Because that's what humans do. We're not the fastest, not the strongest, but we're the ones who figure it out, who make fire from sticks, who turn trash into tools, who look at the end of the world and say, okay, what's next? Here's the thing about a blackout. It's not the darkness that kills you. It's dehydration, disease, hypothermia, poor decisions made in panic. But if you understand the basics, water, food, heat, security, you turn chaos into variables, and variables can be managed. Boiling water kills pathogens. Fire creates heat. Calories create energy. Routine creates sanity. Seven days is nothing. It's also everything. It's the difference between someone who survives and someone who gets remembered as a statistic. The grid's dead. Your phone's bricked. Society's tearing at the seams. But you, you're still here. Congrats. You survived. Now do it again tomorrow.